Imagine a world where you don't just play a video game, but you're actually inside of it. Today, I'm gonna show you how virtual reality makes this possible. We're covering everything from crazy technology straight out of Ready Player One to robotic boots that let you walk endlessly in virtual worlds. And we're gonna answer the question, is virtual reality really the future or is it all just hype? Let's dive in. For those who are new, I'm Zulushi, and I've been nerding out over VR for the last three years. I've tested out the latest tech and games, and I'm gonna share my thoughts on where I think this whole VR thing is headed. All right, so what exactly is VR or virtual reality? Well, it's technology that lets you become the character. Instead of staring at a screen, you see the world through their eyes. Your hands are their hands, and your movements are their movements. Getting the picture? When you put on a VR headset, you're literally teleported inside of the game or experience. Although you're still looking at tiny screens inside of the headset, it doesn't feel like it. It just seems like you're looking around in a completely different environment. This technology allows for an incredible sense of immersion. You're not just playing games anymore. You're living out your fantasies within your favorite fictional worlds. Think about it. You can experience what it's like to survive a zombie apocalypse or fight it out as a gladiator, or in my case, reenact Order 66 and storm the Jedi Temple. Ah, the Order still has some loyal troopers. Ugh. Sorry, younglings. But seriously, no other console or technology has allowed me to experience such epic adventures. But as awesome as this all is, VR isn't perfect. There are some hurdles that keep it from being seamless for everyone. The biggest issue is comfort. Wearing a headset for a long time can get uncomfortable, especially if it's heavy or it doesn't fit well. And then there's motion sickness. For some people, that disconnect between what they're seeing in VR versus what their body is feeling can lead to extreme nausea and dizziness. My brother, for instance, he he can't last for more than two minutes inside a headset without feeling queasy. It's hard to enjoy VR and need to throw up at the same time. The good news, VR companies are on it. Headsets like the Big Screen Beyond are making huge leaps in comfort and performance. This headset in particular is super lightweight and yet still delivers amazing graphics. Plus it's 3D molded to your face so it fits perfectly and is super comfortable. Check out my full review up here or here, I don't know. Motion sickness is getting better too, thanks to more powerful headsets. Lower latency makes the VR world feel more real and responsive. Higher resolution, refresh rates, and better lens technology makes for smoother visuals, which is easier on the eyes. These advancements are slowly making virtual reality more enjoyable for everyone. From what I've seen, the best VR experiences are still on PC VR setups. And that's because all the heavy lifting is being done by your gaming PC, which means the visuals are just better because you don't have to try to cram all that processing power inside of the headset. The big screen beyond is the best I've tried so far, but it comes at a hefty price, over $1,700. And you still need a gaming PC on top of that. That's expensive and not realistic for your average consumer. On the other hand, VR is becoming more accessible thanks to cheaper options entering the market. Devices like the Quest 3 or the newly released Quest 3 S offer impressive VR experiences at a lower price point. And these are standalone headsets, meaning you only need the headset to play, no gaming PC required. While they might not match the same visual quality as PC VR setups, they come close enough to give a good experience. If you're curious about my VR setup, I use the Quest 3 as my main headset it works for standalone games, and then when I want more immersion and better graphics, I use AirLink or Virtual Desktop to connect to my gaming PC and play those PC VR games. And while hardware is improving, there is another challenge, and it's how we move in VR. It's always been a bit tricky. Most games either use joystick movement or teleportation, but that can break immersion. Joystick movement leads to motion sickness for a lot of people, and teleportation makes it feel like you're watching a slideshow. Not fun. But what if we could replace joysticks entirely and make VR movement feel natural? Well, that's where some impressive new tech comes into play. I've tested devices like the Infinidec VR treadmill, the Ecto VR boots, and the newly released Omni One. These devices aim to solve the problem of VR movement by allowing you to walk and run in place, translating your real world movements into the game, and at the same time decreasing motion sickness because your physical movements are matching the virtual movement. Let's talk about the Infinidec. 
And this is so cool because it's literally the exact same VR treadmill shown in Ready Player One. It's the most natural running experience I've had in VR because it actually uses a system of moving belts. One big belt moving forwards and backwards and a bunch of mini belts moving side to side. Running diagonally felt a little bit weird, but overall it was quite the experience. This was really awesome to try, but practically the machine costs like $50,000 and I don't think it's making its way to the consumer level anytime soon. Something more realistic and attainable for VR enthusiasts could be the Ecto VR boots. These are robotic shoes that let you walk infinitely in VR by moving your feet back as you step forward. It sounds futuristic, but they're actually real. They also give a relatively natural walking feeling because you're still taking real steps. These haven't launched yet, and they're still working on cutting down the weight of the boots and improving the experience, but this could be a possible solution to VR movement. And here's something you can actually get your hands on right now, the Omni One. This is a compact, omnidirectional treadmill that lets you move freely in any direction. You attach these special slip-ons to your shoes and they let your feet slide freely on the base. It's not the exact same feeling as walking, but it's pretty close. This is also a complete system that comes with a headset, controllers, and its very own game store. It's kind of wild to me that something like this is actually here. Now, these gadgets make VR more immersive by solving the movement problem, but it brings up the question, do gamers actually want to be active while gaming. While these setups add a whole new dimension to gaming, they can feel more like a fun gym session rather than a relaxing experience. You know, I already get my exercise from walking, running, and swimming. So when it comes time to gaming, most of the time I just wanna relax and I'd rather kick back and sit on my couch or sit at my desk. But for people who aren't as active or who are looking for a fun way to incorporate more movement into their everyday lives, these physical VR devices could be incredibly appealing. They make exercise feel like a game, which is a fantastic way to stay motivated. What do you think? Do gamers want to be active? Regardless, there's no denying that this sort of tech is pushing the boundaries of what's possible in VR. And speaking of taking VR to the next level, it's not just about the solo adventures. VR is changing the way we play together. Earlier this year, I visited my brother in Montreal and we jumped into multiplayer in-person VR for the first time. It was me, him, and some of his friends versus hordes of zombies. The best part was that you actually had to walk around the room to move in game. So no motion sickness, even for my brother. The experience was so much fun. Each game and level was specifically designed so you don't run into walls. And it gave the feeling of being in a large virtual world without boundaries. Being in a fantasy world alongside real people added a whole new layer of immersion and fun. I can definitely see this type of room scale multiplayer VR blowing up in the future. So I just realized that I haven't covered mixed reality and this is technology on headsets that essentially blends virtual reality with the real world, allowing virtual objects to appear within your physical space. And this allows for some crazy experiences like defending your home from a zombie apocalypse. Ah, ah! Oh my gosh! Dude, not cool, not cool at all. But I'm not super focused on it right now because I still think virtual reality has the most potential. It's not limited by your physical space and it lets you step into a completely new reality. That's my two cents. It's super cool, but I'm not completely sold yet. So after experiencing everything from epic solo adventures to intense group battles and testing cutting edge tech that feels like it's straight out of science fiction, I have to say, VR isn't just the future. It's sort of happening right now. And we're only scratching the surface of what's possible. The way it immerses you in any world, lets you live out any fantasy, and brings people together in virtual spaces, there's nothing else quite like it. With millions of people joining the VR community every year, it's clear that this isn't just a fad, it's a revolution. If you're on the fence about VR, I'd encourage you to at least try it once. Hearing me describe it or watching somebody else play it simply does not do it justice. And if you still think it's gimmicky after that, oh well, fair enough. As the tech continues to improve and the limitations like comfort, motion sickness, and cost are addressed, VR will become more accessible and mainstream. Will we ever reach a Ready Player One kind of world where people live in VR? Maybe. I mean, a lot of people are already glued to their screens and overly invested in social media and video games. So once VR hits the masses and is so comfortable that you don't have to take the headset off, this could be our future. And that's somewhat alarming. 
but that opens up a whole nother can of worms. For now, it's important to balance VR with real life activities and relationships. Virtual reality is an amazing tool for entertainment, education, and connection, but it should not and cannot replace the real world. So again, is virtual reality the future? Yes, without a doubt. We just have to wait for the tech to catch up with our imagination. If you're as excited as I am about the future of VR, hit that subscribe button and tag along for the latest VR advancements. Later.